All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. We're going to be talking about episode two of Uzumaki, the horror anime series from Junji Ito's world-renowned hmm. manga. Uh, I'll be one of your hosts, Mark Yacobino. I'm joined by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. Vinny, we really liked episode one. We did. We, we did. really, really liked episode yeah. one. The prospects that were set up, where the series was going. I'm much less excited now having seen episode two. Uh, yes. This was kind of a mess from an animation standpoint, from a story standpoint. What what are your thoughts as someone who read the manga? Yeah, it is. Uh, it feels like I've been betrayed. Mm. It feels like I've been stabbed in the back <laughs> by one of my greatest friends, someone I've held so close, mm. near and dear. No, oh, tra right, a tragedy. <laughs> and, and I'm just I'm 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 not even. I I'm I was mad at first. But now I'm just utterly disappointed. Mm, I knew you were gonna say it. Yeah, <laughs> you were gonna say I'm just utterly disappointed because the fall off is crazy. Like yeah. this is the craziest fall off I think I've ever seen. Like from episode one to two, there is such a quality difference that it's actually remarkable. Right. And I was even hyping up last episode. I was like, "Yo, this this is one of my most anticipated series," which it was. Love the manga. The, the artwork in the manga is beautiful. The first episode was such a promise. It was so beautiful. And it just, what happened? I was saying how this literally took years yeah. to make. And they were like, we're taking another year to finish it up and polish it. This is not multi-year worthy shit. It's no. not. It, this, this episode looks unfinished. There's entire, the whole episode looks com from an animation point completely on a different tier of quality than the first episode so many just still frames stiff movement character designs are really off like to a point where they're just anatomically like not <laughs> that not how humans move <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and very childish mm -hmm. in drawing and not in a good way like a very like like this wasn't done professionally <laughs> yeah. um and literal scenes that are have to be unfinished. There's a scene where Kiryu's walking, and it's she's not actually walking. It's just a looped two frames. She's going like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's another scene where she's also walking up the tower. The background is not moving, so her head is just <laughs> bopping. And there's so many examples throughout this episode of like, where the hell? Like, what the hell went wrong? Yeah. And, yeah, I, we'll get into the story, but from mm -hmm. a technical side, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't have anything that on animation. You kind of summed it up. Uh, but on a story side, the story was already getting pretty weird for me. Mm. I am, I'm i not the biggest fan of super weird stuff. And when they started introducing the snail people, I get snails have spirals on them, but then there's a lot of snail people in this episode. And I'm like, yeah. okay, this is really out there. And if the story around it was more interesting or more well paced, I think I'd be more on board. Mm. But the pacing in this episode is ridiculously fast. I mean, yeah. every scene, the main character is just in a new area of town with a new look like her hair is spiraling now she goes from one scene then she's in the barbershop then she's in the schoolyard then she's cutting her hair off then she's fighting someone in a hair battle yeah. <laughs> between someone else that now is infected by the spiral. And in the background, there's just new snail people every second. We're in the forest stomping snail eggs, and then we're back in the schoolyard. I was just, like, baffled. It was so jarring, this entire episode, from a story standpoint. And then under all of this, we have this love story that we're supposed to care about between these two, I guess, teenagers that fall yeah. in love. Their families are abusive to both of them. They can't be together. And then they run away, and then they turn into snakes. They, like, coil together, and that's how they turn into this you know, amalgamation of two humans becoming like bonded together, like the two snakes we see in the beginning of the episode. Again, the iconography of the spiral is there and prominent, but from a story standpoint, it's just, I don't even know how we got there. Yeah. And I will guarantee you one thing. It is done much better in the manga. <laughs> I, uh, I, like, it, the, I, uh, I agree. I a hundred percent agree. The, the pacing was God awful. It was a mess. It was such a mess. And 
I take back what I said last episode because last episode I was saying how, you know, they're in the manga. It's very episodic where a supernatural event happens. There's a whole chapter dedicated. May that be somewhere between 20 to 60 pages worth of just focusing just on that supernatural event. Yeah. And then it ends. And then a couple days or a month or however amount of time passes by and then the next supernatural event and it's event by event in a very episodic manner and it does good in the manga in my opinion i really i like it that way um and i defended the first episode because i was saying how when you are adapting something you do have to have some liberties especially with a story like uzumaki with a lot of just short story after short story after short story i was like okay they're blending the subplots here, right? We're being introduced to subplots coincidingly. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's fine, right? Because you mm-hmm. have to adapt to the film medium. Yeah. And it does not work here. So might have worked in the first episode. I take back what I say <laughs> in that first episode because the, in my opinion, I know you said it, it was a little too weird for you. Yeah. The snails in the manga for me was my like favorite part of horror that was the scariest yeah. part for me in the manga mm-hmm. and it is such a shame that one of my favorite parts is completely butchered here mm-hmm. it, we're given so much more time in the manga so yeah i'm sorry yeah, that sorry. you had to experience <laughs> it in this light because it is it is a shame it is a genuine shame like in the manga we are introduced to the slowpoke kid. He's mm-hmm. bullied, and we see him slowly in this very horrific body horror way become a snail. Mm-hmm. And then we see that that curse is then led on to his bully. And then right. we see that bully is slowly, right? And what I find so disturbing about that is because uh, the snails are, well, I forget the word, but they're basically both genders, right? Or oh, yeah, both yeah. sexes at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And the bully and the kid, now that they're snails, they end up mating. Right. I, I, yeah. I didn't understand because there were so many snails. I was just like, wait, who is that? who are these two? Okay, that yeah, that that is horrifying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was horrifying to me in the manga because I was like, oh my God, that's like sickening. Yeah. And it is butchered here. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely butchered because now we're having the hair subplot. We're having the couple from the row houses subplot. And there's not enough time Mm -hmm. in the episode to deal with all of them. It's actually insane to me that the only time that we see the bully transform into the snail or like see like a sign of him transforming is when he's running after the girls and or he's like running after like a group of kids. And he's like, oh, wait up. And he has like a bit of a hunch to his back. And then the next time we see him, completely transformed and they're already like locked away like it is i i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure i'm not i'm not gonna put a calculation on it if i am (laughs) wrong but i remember when i read this that it was not like that it was paced out and we saw the transformation but between every character equally yeah and yeah it's I, I sorry, that was very long. No, I mean explanation. There was but, there was yeah. so much shit happening in this episode. The amount of plot points that were hit in 22 minutes is just you can't tell a convincing story when you do yeah. something like this. You have the hair subplot, you have a bunch of different snail subplots, you have the lo- the young lover snob, uh, subplot, and then you have the uh, the, the lighthouse, lighthouse subplot, yeah. and all of it just happens in this episode. And the main character just goes through this whole journey of having hair, then her hair spirals, and then by the end she's short-haired and, like, telling these two random kids, don't go up this lighthouse. And then we see the lighthouse is corrupted to some degree. But again, the main character just looks at it like it's a normal lighthouse. Like, she's like, oh, this is a lens that they use for lighthouses. But it has all this stuff on it, so I don't know if that's in the manga where you can't actually recognize the disease or something like that. You can't see it physically. Or if it was just weird dialogue choice i don't know but i i am excited to look 
and read the manga now having seen yeah. how badly it is treated here because yeah this was this was just not going to fulfill those those horror and that and that dread that horror is supposed to build it's supposed to build it's not just supposed to hit you over the head like boom 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 hmm. uh it's just really messy um and yeah i i don't have that much else to say about yeah. this episode because i i was just kind of rolling my eyes throughout i was like i don't know what's going on yeah yeah no i 100 percent agree i think also the hair subplot for me in the manga I, that was probably like the least scariest in the manga. Yeah. But I also think that's one of the most iconic parts because in the manga, it is presented honestly, the best way I could describe it is kind of, it's just cool, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's scary um, when it, cause it's kind of commenting on beauty standards. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a really, I, it was, memorable for me when i read it because it was just really cool but in this adaptation it's not cool no because they were given no time <laughs> and i think you know that's really the best we can say about this or, or or the i don't best i'm trying to find the words here really the only thing we can truly say about the failure of this episode is how terribly paced it yeah. is it is i like I can't even put into words. You just have to watch the episode. If uh, no, you don't, already. don't watch this one. Or, <laughs> don't watch this episode. Don't watch this. Don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it. But like, if you have seen it, then you know exactly what we're talking about. Like it, it is all over the place. Yeah. I, uh, like she goes to the hair salon. It doesn't get cut, but then the guy gets wrapped up in it and he's able to cut it. Yeah. And then it doesn't grow back and it doesn't yeah. turn the, it turns the other girl into a thing, but this girl, she's just able to just, go around town like oh look i just i tied it up in a bun nope it's still fine no nope, the hair's not taking me apart but the other girl she gets destroyed really quickly i get she's more obsessed and that's the point but i was just like i don't yeah. really get how this is is equating and and how the virus or whatever this is this curse spreads because i thought our main character i guess she's obsessed with the investigation of what the spiral is but i don't understand why she would be infected by it but again that's something we might find out later. Not that I'm excited for the future of the show now, but yeah. I guess it'll be explored to some degree. But Yeah, that also reminded me too. I don't want to spoil you for anything mm. or spoil the audience if they don't know, but the couple of the row houses and the row houses themselves are, it's very significant oh, okay. later in the story. I see. And it is... It is quite shit <laughs> that we're spent no time knowing, like, introducing and laying the foundation of what is to be a very significant yeah. plot point that is to come. The whole couple is, it's like you forget about them, and like, they're literally in like two scenes that are less than 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And also, another thing, too, is Uzumaki has a crazy climax in the manga like the finale within the manga is insane it is all it's crazy and seeing the animation quality of episode two mm. i am downright scared if they'll be even able to pull off what is to come because yeah. If they can't pull off, you know, two people running on a beach, <laughs> yeah, then like, whoa, like this is scary. Like, what went wrong? Yeah, you know? they blew the budget on episode one to make a cool trailer, and then they blew the budget on the climax. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna read the manga honestly before this show finishes up, because uh, I am interested in the story from episode one. But I, I will be watching it because I think we'll do a full season review. I don't think we'll be back next week to to talk about this unless next week it just like everything's back on track but I, yeah. I very much doubt it uh based on the pacing of this episode um so yeah that that's our thoughts on on episode two of uzumaki obviously not very um positive but we'll be back probably at the end of the season unless there's some miracle turnaround next week in episode three uh to kind of wrap up our thoughts and by then i will likely have read the manga and we'll be on your train even more i'll be like you know as a longtime yeah. manga fan of yeah. uzumaki I, one whole week i am out on yeah. this show um 
but yeah, th those have been our thoughts. Uh, follow us on all of our social medias. They'll be displayed right here or in the description. Really appreciate you checking this out. We'll be talking plenty more anime, plenty more animation. We just recorded for the look back, the the newest anime movie. We're talking about Don Don moving forward. And then if you're not into anime, but you're into other animation, um, we're, we talked about Transformers 1, we talked about Wild Robot, uh, and then if you're into live action, we're also talking about all those shows and movies that are coming out nowadays. So thank you for watching. I want you to check out more of that stuff. Uh, I've been one of your hosts, Mark Yacobino. And it has been me, Vinny Albano. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. This is The Culture.